we're waiting for Nathan, or we're hoping to still get Nathan and Monica on the call. Um, but that, that, that would be it for our committee members. Um, so it's up to you, Lisa. We have a quorum if you'd like to get started or if you want to wait uh, just a few minutes. Why don't we, yeah, why don't we go ahead? Let's go. Um, we, we just have to wait one more minute. We're just connecting to YouTube um, and I will let you know as soon as we are live. Great. Okay, you. great. Okay, you are live. Great, okay, thank you. So we're ready to go. I call this meeting to order. Um, due to the provisions of the governor's ex executive orders in-25-20 and in-29-20, which suspend certain requirements of the Brown Act and the order of health officers of the Sonoma County to shelter in place to minimize the spread of COVID-19. The Art and Public Places Committee will be conducting today's meeting virtual settings using Zoom webinar. Committee members and staff are participating from remote locations and are practicing appropriate social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to speak during, this I during any of the items public comment or during our public hearing items will be able to do so by raising their hand and will be given the ability to address the committee. The recording secretary will take roll call. Please let the record reflect that all committee members with the exception of Nathan Azidirian and Monica Bryant are present. Great. Thank you. Um, next up on the agenda is public comment. If you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please select the raise hand button. If you are dialing in via telephone, please press nine to raise your hand. Each speaker has three minutes. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and viewers. Please make sure to mute yourself when you're invited to do so. The microphone will be muted at the end of the countdown. Do we have any comments from the public who wish to? We have no comments at this time. Okay. Um, and let's go on to, to the scheduled items. 4.1 Public Art Programs Strategic Planning. Thank you, Lisa. Right. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. <laughs> I'll, I'll just briefly introduce this item. Um, nice to see all of you. Thank you for making this a priority in your schedule to attend a special meeting to discuss the strategic planning for the Art and Public Places Program and Committee. Um, as you remember back last, at the end of last um, year, I believe, uh, during our annual planning discussions, uh, we talked about um, undertaking some strategic planning for the public art program. And at that time, um, we had identified Third Plateau as a consultant team we wanted to work with and um, brought them on board early in 2020 to start that process. And um, we have been working with them since then through some changes to our scope um, and through a crisis emerging with COVID and other such challenges, um, plus fires and anything else you wanna throw in the boat. Um, but we have uh, been continuing to work towards our main goal of producing a strategic plan for the public art program. And um, Jeannie and the team who's on this call today will be facilitating a conversation with you about program goals, as well as mission and vision outlines for the program. Um, and they're gonna start with some background into what research and uh, planning has been done to date, um, working with various subcommittees or uh, steering committees um, for different components of the pro uh, project, as well as what outreach they've done to the arts community and other stakeholders. So um, this program, uh, this project, I believe is really uh, at a good time, even though it's an odd time, um, unusual circumstances. We're really trying to see this as an opportunity to look really holistically at the public art program at its place within the city of Santa Rosa and within the community of Santa Rosa itself um, and put everything out on the table in terms of what works and what doesn't and what can we change to see what we want um, in, in the 
public art program. So with that, I would like to introduce Jeannie Howell. She's our project manager for this project. Um, and then the rest of the Third Plateau team, welcome. Thank you for being here today. And I'll turn it over to you, Jeannie. Thanks, Tara. Hi, everyone. I'm Jeannie Howell. Um, like Tara mentioned, um, I, I, some of those faces I, are very familiar. Um, I'm a doctor here at Third Plateau, um, social impact strategy firm that's been working with Tara um, and the public art program and the various committees on the work that, um, that we've been doing throughout the year. Um, I'm going to have our team introduce themselves um, and I'll let them do that themselves, name, title, what your role on this project um, moving forward. Um, Madeline, would you like to start us off? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Madeline Labosco, and I'm a researcher with the Third Plateau team. And my role has mainly been leading the, the learning phases of this project, which we'll talk about a little bit in a, in a shortly, but really learning to make sure we're informing those strategic planning conversations and ultimately decision making. Madeline. John. Hi everybody, my name is Jonathan Kaufman. I'm one of the co-founders and principals here at Third Plateau. Um, and I've been a, a sort of a strategic advisor throughout this process um, and uh, moving forward, I'm gonna be working very closely with um, Alex and Maya to really help draft these documents and get them to a final, uh, a final place for everybody so we can start to move towards implementation. I'm really excited. Thanks again for having us here. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, Alex. Hi, everyone. My name is Alex Tagavian, and I'm a partner with Capital Impact. We are a, uh, in some ways, a sister organization to Third Plateau, and we have expertise in state and local government and strategies to help further um, promising programs and ideas. So much like Jonathan, my role in this project has been that of a strategic advisor and helping to shape the final deliverables for uh, the committee. And Maya, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Maya Kageyama. I'm a director at Third Plateau. Um, my background is in organizational development and um, support to nonprofits, as well as city and state government and health departments. Um, I grew up actually in Ukiah doing a lot of arts um, and performing arts, and my family now lives in Santa Rosa. So I'm actually really excited um, to be working with you all on this. Thanks, Maya. Great. Um, well, we're all super excited to be here with you. We have a lot to cover. So we're going to dive right in. Um, uh, essentially, this um, meeting is about really um, getting you all up to speed on the work that has been done this year. Um, we really want to listen to your insights and feedback on some of the pieces that we have been working on with the uh, steering committee that's been working on the strategic plan. Um, and then explore um, some ideas, some purpose, some role in the future of this um, committee as it relates to the strategic plan and the goals um, that we are starting to draft for the plan. Um, I'm gonna share my screen really quick to try to give you a visual um, of the, the process that we have gone through. Um, give me just a moment here. And so this really kind of outlines where we started and where we're at now. So back at the way back in the beginning of the year, um, we started with pre-planning, um, understanding that we were going through a strategic planning um, process. Um, and that's really about, you know, scoping the project, creating the committee, um, and really just kind of putting all the nuts and bolts together um, with the project planning and the scheduling. Then we moved into sort of the phase one of, of planning, which is the learning phase. Um, and uh, uh, Madeline's actually going to take you through quickly some of the key learnings from that um, phase. But that really encompasses um, all of the interviews we did, the best research, surveys, analysis, um, and the assessments that we did around the needs um, of the community and of the program. Um, I, you know, between the pre-planning and the phase one is what Tara mentioned was when you know, COVID hit and things started to take a slightly different approach which was um, the, we needed to come up with some different ideas around crisis management, right? Um, to respond to the needs of the community. 
um, and come up with some different strategies and tactics to help um, with that response. Uh, so we rescoped the project and we um, went about doing some crisis management planning with the program um, and that encased a crisis management committee that was um, formed. Uh, we did some a workshop with that committee. Um, we did a needs assessment around COVID and around the, um, the crisis and the needs in the community. And we did some different um, scenario and contingency planning within that workshop. That produced a response plan um, that encompasses a couple different strategies um, that can be implemented within um, the, the coming six months um, moving into 2021. Um, that took us all the way to the end of September, which then brings us to October through December, which is really focusing back on that longer term strategies, um, which is the strategic planning piece. So we have already conducted a, a planning retreat um, with the committee. Um, and now we're kind of in that phase where we're still trying to gather additional information from the stakeholders that are going to be not only a part of this plan, but implementing pieces of it, which is where this um, committee really um, comes in. So uh, we're going to be sharing some information with you today around drafting the, vis the vision, the mission, and um, something called a theory of change, which Jonathan's going to take you through. Um, and also, um, having you take a look at the two year goals um, that are starting to be sort of formed from some of the conversations we've already had. Um, and this kind of just basically breaks down the strategic planning piece that I kind of just went over. Um, but really, this is where we're at right now, which is the ideation phase. After that, um, as Jonathan mentioned, this is really about drafting the plan um, uh, all the way to the end of the year, um, really getting a little into the nitty gritty about implementation, how all these pieces work together um, and continue to gain feedback on that piece as well. Um, Madeline, would you like to go over um, the, the uh, sorry, the, um, the research overview that's in the packet um, for the committee and um, talk about that process that we went through? Sure, absolutely. Thank you, Jeannie. Um, really to kind of better understand that current reality and desired future, as Jeannie mentioned, we tried to answer those questions um, by carrying out three different levels of learning and really research. And um, so we actually looked at both the field level, the user level, and the organizational level, trying to make sure we were making informed decisions and really informing those conversations. So at the field level, we really sought out what we could learn from the public art field, conducting secondary web-based desk research on the impacts of public art, public art paradigms and goals, as well as common challenges with municipal art programs. Um, we also did some research on other cities and their innovative approaches, seeing what lessons we could learn and take into consideration when looking at our own approach. At the user level, we really wanted to develop a better understanding of the users of public art in the city of Santa Rosa and took a, quite a broad lens to that potential user base. Uh, much of our learning was done through interviews. We conducted about 19 interviews with artists, art organizations, the general public, um, and core organizational staff within the city program. We also carried out a survey for Santa Rosa area creatives specifically that received more than 100 responses and took a lot of great insights from that survey as well. Lastly, at the organization level, we really took a look at um, identifying structural and operational needs and opportunities to best support public arts from the city. So we did an additional 11 interviews um, with stakeholders from the city's public art network, really focusing in on current strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, which as Jeannie mentioned throughout this time frame, certainly evolved and we considered that evolving landscape looking forward. The pack you provided gives some key takeaways, but there's just a few that I'd like to mention quickly and just provide a brief overview of. One of our biggest findings was that, um, you know, City of Santa Rosa takes a pretty traditional uh, public art or art in public places approach but other public art paradigms also present really unique opportunities to both create community identity and foster development. These can include creative placemaking, creative economies, just to name a few, but often these approaches 
really focus on both social and economic impacts for the city as a whole to include the general public and artists. Um, and these really are successful because they're often driven by increased community engagement. And um, we saw an opportunity for the city of Santa Rosa there to potentially really get into that engagement, get a better understanding of community needs um, with opportunities to really increase strategic collaboration across the board, both with arts organizations and artists. Um, additionally, through many of our conversations, as well as our survey, it became clear that the creative community in the area is vast and varied, um, and that there's really an opportunity to make sure it's inclusive, both of the varied art forms and of community that's really representative of that larger community. In addition um, to making it more inclusive, there's definitely an opportunity to decrease some red tape when possible, acknowledging that that's not always the case, but something to be mindful of in this moment. Uh, and lastly, there was really an opportunity that in this moment came through many conversations of art as such a powerful connector and unifier and something so important to lean into in these tumultuous times. And it was underscored the, the public art program's unique positioning in the city within planning and economic development and really the great opportunity that lies there in this kind of rebuilding phase where we're responding to these multiple crises and this moment in time. Um, the committee really engaged with this information, as Jeannie mentioned, both in the response workshop and our strategic retreat, bringing their unique perspectives and experiences. We had dynamic conversation, which really helped inform our draft mission, vision, and goals that we'll talk about shortly. But before I turn it over to Jonathan, just wanted to pause and see if there's any questions on any of those initial findings um, before we jump into what kind of they led to as a result so far. Thanks, Madeline. Um, it looks like Nina, you had a question? Yeah, can, can you identify the stakeholders? Is this just the visual arts community or more uh, diverse arts? Yeah, thank you. That's a, a great question. We, we went more broadly than visual arts. We definitely acknowledged that historically a lot of the arts in the city of Santa Rosa focused on visual arts and that came up in many of the conversations we had but um, of the artists we spoke with, a number of them were involved in other art forms and the surveys were, were definitely more broad. Um, we had a number of people in performing arts, uh, literature and, and arts education as well in a broad sense. So it, it wasn't limited to visual arts, but that definitely came up as a common theme that, that often is the first thing that's thought of within the community. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Well, as we shift to um, more of a discussion that Jonathan's going to lead us through, um, I quickly just wanted to mention, you know, really how we think about strategic planning versus maybe you've done strategic planning with other organizations or, um, you know, in your own lines of business. Um, you know, we really seek to cultivate a space. Um, with the right people, the right information, um, and the right environment, um, so that really strong ideas emerge, um, and you're best supported to realize that vision for the public art program here. We're not here to tell you your strategy. Um, we're here to enable you to shape your own future. Um, so the key questions that have really driven this process have been, you know, what is our current reality, which um, Madeline and the research team really dug into. Um, and then we talk about what is our ideal, what's their desired future? You know, what is the state which we're trying to get to? Um, and how do we bridge that gap between our current reality and our desired future? And that's really what the strategic planning piece is all about. Um, so with that, I'd love to turn this over to Jonathan, who's going to um, talk you through some of the pieces in your packet um, and uh, go through a discussion. Great. Thank you, Jeannie. Um, so great strategic planning um, requires a very strong foundation of a couple of things. Um, the first one is a vision. And a vision statement is really about what is the, um, what's the reality we want to be living in? Not what we currently are living in and not some incremental improvement on the current reality, 
but actually taking a step back and asking, what are we trying to build in Santa Rosa? What do we want to see in our community? Um, it does not need to be perfectly unique to who, uh, to us. We likely share that vision with lots of other organizations and some government agencies. Um, but it, it really is our, our North Star of what we're trying to strive for. Our mission statement is incredibly unique to us. And that does need to be our unique contribution to creating that vision. So if you think of the vision statement as the, the puzzle that everybody collectively in Santa Rosa is trying to build, um, our mission statement represents the unique puzzle piece or puzzle pieces we're bringing to that. Um, and so we wanna make sure that that's what anchors our strategic planning efforts, understanding where are we trying to go and what do we think our unique strength and value add is to that discussion. And from there, we can start to think about what are some goals for the next couple of years to make progress towards building that puzzle. So in your packet, um, you've got some draft mission and vision statements. I'm gonna share my screen so we can make sure that we're all looking at the same thing and, and together here. So you should be able to see my, my screen now. Um, and this is, uh, this is where we're gonna start today. Um, Let's start with our vision statement. And we've been working with the, the strategic planning committee um, to start to think of, okay, what are some options of what we can be looking at? And today, what we'd really love to do from the, um, from the public arts, you know, from the art and public places committee here is to get feedback and input about what's resonating, what's not resonating, um, so that we can continue this iterative process of constantly drafting better and better versions, um, eventually landing at a final vision statement, mission statement, and uh, an eventual strategic plan. So we've got three options that we're putting in front of you today for some reaction on vision. Um, so option one, an empowered and inclusive Santa Rosa community connected through the power of art. Option two, a Santa Rosa where creative and cultural expression is embedded into the fabric of our community. And option three, we envision a Santa Rosa where public art expression cultivates an inclusive sense of place and community for all. To be very clear, you do not need to just pick one of these and that's the end of the conversation. This is trying to have a starting place for it. We can mix and match these. We can create option four, five, six, and seven if you would like. Um, but I would love to start and hear from committee members. From these three options, what resonates with you? What, when you read it or when you hear it, you think to yourself, yes, that's the reality we're trying to build here. I will, go ahead. I will go ahead and start if no one else is. I had a couple. Um, option one i felt it was to the point and it had a solid active message um this message it was present option two i just it didn't sit with me that well option three i'm just reading my notes here this option was more as if it was a possibility um that we're reaching out to it although it didn't feel so concrete. Um, that, that's really, I would love, to, would you mind unpacking some of those comments a little bit? When you said option one felt very present, um, can you figure out what, what in there is making you react that way? Um, because it's, it's, it's saying what you are rather than looking forward to the future, what we're grasping for, where I feel, yeah, feel number three is more kind of we're grasping to be something, but we're just, you know, and we're, we're not there. I get that. We're not, but it's just, it's more or less telling us the obvious. <laughs> so I don't know if that explains or if I'm not how else can I put this? Let me see. What? No, I, I think that's really helpful to hear. I, I, um, it's, it's good to hear your very natural reactions to these. And, um, but I want to make sure that we're hearing and understanding in your comments um, is I want to make sure that it's, uh, 
like the language is really resonating with you. And I want to make sure we're not getting too hung up on syntax of something. Okay. So option three, for example, like the structure of it is fundamentally different, right? We envision a Santa Rosa as opposed to just a Santa Rosa where public art expression, da, 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 da. Um, and so I, it, what it sounds like though is the language in the first one is really describing the community you want to be living in. Um, as opposed to the other ones feel a little bit more disconnected and a little bit more removed. Right. Is that is that fair? Yes, that is. I would like That's to uh, contribute that I liked uh, option two as uh, a more active um, idea of creativity and cultural expression is part of the is part of our world here. Um, so I, I was drawn to that one. I really appreciate that that reflection. Um, there's some really um, there, there's something uh, I, I see a real when I read these, I think I see a real difference in option one and option two of option one is talking about the um, sort of the result of, of the art, uh, talking about this empowered and inclusive community. Um, option two talks a little bit more about the art itself of it's about creativity and cultural expression. Um, obviously, both of those are very desired and really great things, um, but interesting to hear which one you're drawn to and, and um, it feels like there's a little bit more meat about the what on option two and I think a little bit more meat around the why in option one. Are you reading them the same way, Member Bryant? Yes, that, that, that makes sense uh, to describe the difference. That's, that's really oh, helpful. Yeah. It looks like Melanie had a comment next. I was, I was going to say, how are we doing this? I'm so I'm sorry. I'm a bit confused. Are we just normally our chair says acknowledges us? Are we just giving our comments? Thanks, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, I think in in the context of this item and to have a um, a conversation where uh, people can join in and share their ideas, I would suggest it's up to you, Chair Puentes. I would suggest that. Um, that as long as you're you're raising your hand to be recognized and not everyone's talking at once that you don't necessarily have to go through the chair but that is up to the chair i was since they are asking the questions i was letting them go ahead um and i'll i can go ahead and let them go ahead just because they're the ones who are asking the questions and trying to get as much feedback as possible if that's if that's okay I, I don't have any objections to that. Um, I could use uh, Tara or someone else if you can help um, help flag when hands are raised since I can't see everybody at, at the same time I'm sharing my screen, but um, I'm, I'm fine with that approach. So then in that spirit, um, is there someone who Melanie? was about to weigh in? <laughs> Melanie, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, it's interesting. I, I actually had a very different uh, response. Number three just really jumped out at me. And I think it was because of a couple of words, it, it, an exclusive sense of place, um, which made me just think about, um, you know, we have such a, we don't really have such a diverse community, but um, it's important to make sure that everybody feels like they belong. And that number three sort of says that to me. Um, and it could like just that. So be that word, the inclusive sense of place and community for all. Um, yeah, so that everybody knows and what, no matter what, and maybe I'm reading into this, no matter what kind of art they're bringing, we want to see it and it's welcome. That's really helpful. Thank you. And um, yeah, especially calling out a specific phrase there that's really resonating with you is, uh, is, is really helpful. Other thoughts about what's resonating with you in these first three options? I had another. Yeah, it looks like Nina had her hand up. Okay. Um, Lisa, Go for it, that's Nina. okay. Oh, absolutely. So there's aspects of all three of these that appeal to me. If I was to pick one, I would pick option three, but I would attempt to include some things from both one and two 
one, I like the idea of empowered. Inclusive is also worded in option three. Um, and option two, the idea where uh, creative and cultural expression is embedded into the fabric of our community. The word that's not in here is identity. And I think that that can be inferred um, possibly in option two. Um, so we, the limitation of option three, it says where public art expression, ex it cultivates an inclusive, cultivates blah, 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 just the, the phrase public art expression. So is it possible to include, um, when you say creative and cultural expression is embedded into the fabric of the community, I think of anybody from school children to middle age to older age, everybody having a sense of identity through the art that's created here in the, the individual and public and private sphere, all of it together, um, that the public art expression is just one of them. That, and it evolves from the community's um, identity. But are we to are we to make this vision just for the public art, or it, are we talking also about um, the community expression? Uh, I'm happy to share my thinking, but I, all of your answers to that question, I think, will be very telling. Um, as a strategist, I would encourage us to think about the role that public art uh, plays and the vision for what we are. Um, like the, the to what end side of public art, right? There's the, uh, we're here because there's value in art itself um, and all of that expression and what it can do and what it, what it draws out from people and how it brings people together, right? Both of those things are really critical. So I think that's the lens that I would approach this as opposed to a vision statement that is really just about the Santa Rosa in general um, and can apply to any department within the, the city, I think is gonna be a lot less meaningful for us. So I would like to add then to uh, option three, a sense of belong, cultivates a sense of belonging and identity. I like that. that. That's really helpful. Thank you very much. I think there was someone else who was about to jump in, but I can't see uh, which hands are raised. Uh, this is Jeff. That looks and, like Jeff. And, yeah, I was hoping to jump in here. Um, so I think it's really interesting to hear um, individual um, options expressed as being preferable. And then Nina um, really appreciated your comments because I was thinking a very similar thing that there are aspects of all three that I think are, are on target, but not none of the options actually is inclusive enough to say it all in like one uh, succinct vision statement. And, and so I, I've been looking at these things, well, how do you mix and match these words? Um, and one of the things that occurs to me is that um, the, these words like inclusive, uh, sense of place, creative and cultural expression embedded uh, somehow in our, in our community, all of these are, are I think, great aspirational um, uh, philosophies uh, uh, about, you know, the, a vision is sort of an aspirational philosophy for um, a strategic plan. So I want it to be active and present and now, but I also think it should be aspirational for the future. What are we trying to get to? So I started uh, to mix and match uh, the, the language here a little bit and I'm thinking it, it in my mind, it could be something like we envision a Santa Rosa where public art inspires creative and cultural expression and uh, to create an inclusive sense of place and community or something, you know, things like something like that, where we can sort of cobble together the best parts of each of these options. That's really helpful. Um, to save us all a headache, uh, we're not going to try to wordsmith this to a final version together because um, 
I, I, I like you all too much to try to put you through that. Um, but that's really helpful uh, to hear some specific language in here that's really resonating with you from a couple of these ones. And um, I'm seeing lots of heads nodding as we're trying to blend some of these together. Um, does anybody else um, have an aspect of this that they want to make sure or would love to see in the final version, either a specific word or phrase in these options or that's not in these options that you would really like to see in that final version? Kristen? I wanted to second Nathan's comments about uh, the, Jeff, Jeff's comments. As a sorry. Video, sorry, Jeff's comments uh, about blending an aspirational philosophy with a call to action. And that's really what I find to be most powerful in a vision statement is as a call to action as well. And uh, I think including the word inspires a community. Uh, I, I think that's a really powerful way to think about it. So I would encourage adding an action verb in there to bring home the the aspirational philosophy and the feel goods. <laughs> yeah, I really like that. And that using a word like inspire also helps connect the um, the value of art for art's sake, and also what art can then produce and what it can what it can lead to. I think um, a word like inspire hits on both of those notes in really exciting ways. That's a that that's definitely worth playing with. Um, any other final thoughts on the vision statement here before we have a similar conversation about mission statements? Okay, well, let's keep moving. So again, the vision statement is about this, um, the reality we're striving towards, right? The reality we want for our community, but it's likely several years, you know, if some of these are going to be good vision statements are often a generation or two into the future, right? It's going to require a lot to build towards what we're trying to get to. A mission statement takes, um, takes that big picture puzzle and says, okay, for that to happen, a lot of things are going to have to go right from a lot of different players. Us, as the public art, here is the puzzle piece, the unique piece we can contribute to making that vision a reality. So it's very similar. We've got three options here of just a place to start the conversation. We'd love your input. Um, so this is about the unique puzzle piece we bring to the table to help build that, that vision statement we just discussed. So option one, the public art program amplifies community voice and enables diverse and culturally relevant expressions of art into community spaces. Option two, Santa Rosa's public art program champions artistic expression through community-based strategies that infuse an array of art experiences into public spaces. Option three, Santa Rosa's public art program fosters public art experiences that reflect the rich culture and history of its community. So again, we are not wed to these three. We are happy to mix and match or happy to go an entirely different route, but really just want your input as you read through these, what resonates with you and what doesn't? If you think about the unique contribution that we make towards that vision. I see Monica's hand up. Go ahead. Oh, you're unmuted. Or I should say you're muted. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh in this one too, I uh, am drawn to option two because of uh, the ex idea of championing artistic expression through community-based strategies. Um, you know, I just feel like the arts really need to be um, supported and advocated to, to grow. Um, it's not just a matter of recognizing creativity uh, and um, works of creativity in the community. But I thought uh, that was important that it talks about that too. So it's this idea of champion, uh, championing uh, the arts. You think about our unique contribution, I think it's a fairly easy argument to say the public art program is best positioned to actually do that championing, right? That's a really easy, unique, 
contribution we can make. What, uh, what else resonates or doesn't resonate for members? Jeff and then Nina. Yeah, so I, again, I think there are aspects of all of these options that, um, that, that resonate with me, but there's one fundamental question that comes to mind that none of these addresses. And in my mind, my experience uh, with public art is that sometimes uh, as much as you want public art to draw the community together, to be a reflection of um, uh, the sort of the cultural makeup of your community that um, so that people feel like uh, it's, it's there for them. Sometimes you want public art, depending on its location and the purpose of the project, to do something maybe a bit more, to help define a place as a, as, as a distinctly unique place that would be, let's say, a destination that would draw people. Um, Santa Rosa is the kind of um, city that definitely has to think about its own local population and, and being inclusive, but it's also um, sitting geographically and economically in a region that um, hopefully post pandemic, tourism, uh, the wine uh, and hops industries and, and, and the arts and culture and all of these things that make Sonoma County a wonderful destination that Santa Rosa can help position itself at the center of um, not only Sonoma County life, but maybe as a destination for visitors. So I can imagine um, certain locations where the public art project might do, a, it might do more um, or it may have a different purpose than what is expressed in any one of these options. And so I find myself um, thinking about, well, re what really is the mission of our committee and of the public art program? Is it only to um, champion local artistic expression, community-based strategies, um, you know, reflecting the cult culture and history of our community or, or are these projects sometimes going to do uh, to, to aspire to be something more in order to be maybe symbolic of as a cultural beacon to you know to beyond our, our particular city or, or county so if we can define what our purpose is um, in a way that allows for us to be both local and more expansive in what we're trying to accomplish, then in, at least in my mind, I'd like to see whatever option we go with in the mission to allow for maybe that um, creation of a sense of place or a destination as defined by public art to be part of what we're trying to accomplish. I think that's really profound and um... Uh, that, that comment resonates with me a lot. I want to make sure I'm hearing some of this um, uh, accurately. So I would like to sort of recap some of this and you can let me know where I went off course and how to strengthen that. Hey, but I, I think, think what I'm off hearing the top from... of my head. So no, this is great. This is great. <laughs> uh, so what I'm hearing here is a couple of things. One is that like, there's a concept of like placemaking that is missing from these mission statements. And the idea of like, not just having like an art experience, but genuinely having art help define what that space is and how it's used and what it does and how it inspires or connects and all of that, that it's, it's beyond just the expression, but the expression is maybe that's where it becomes a little bit more local, right? It's helping local artists to express and then it's using local and broader artists to help place make. Um, and maybe that's where that dynamic actually takes some, takes some root where we can have different strategies for both local and for, um, for external artists. That, uh, that's what I'm hearing, at least in your, in your description. Yeah, I think that helps um, more. Uh, I think it, it articulates what I'm trying to, to say uh, more succinctly. So thank you. 
Thank you. I think Nina had your hand up a while back if you yeah. want to go ahead. Yeah. So I really like the comments both that Jeff and Jonathan just made. Uh, first of all, I agree also again that there's option there's aspects of all three of the options that are good. Um, I want to say this before I forget because the term cultural it was a cultural beacon that you you said, uh, Jeff. Um, I it it, it might have been destination, but uh, well, yeah, used, some, used something word, like that. <laughs> you used the word beacon and. I mean, overall, I like option two, except that it's completely composed of prepositional phrases and it doesn't <laughs> uh, read right. Um, if you took uh, option three, Santa Rosa's public art program fosters public art experiences that reflect the rich culture and history of its community. And if you added something about and towards the future, like a cultural beacon, um, then adding the future into option three would be good. Um, and adding the idea of placemaking, if you can put all of that together. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. And I, I think there is an angle to do this uh, relatively seamlessly um, and owning where we're housed within the city, right? This is um, parts of this about economic development, um, which I think can also drive some of those aspects of placemaking and being that beacon and just taking a slightly, um, taking the arts approach to what that can look like. Um, I think this is really interesting. Thank you. Um, I think Kristen, you had your hand up as well. I did, yes. Uh, I had a thought to add to the placemaking conversation. Um, I, uh, the preposition, preposition, bleh. Option two, aside from the grammatical uh, <laughs> structure of it, I really like the phrase community-based strategies for the point that Jonathan was just talking about has within the city opportunities. And I think placemaking has a huge hand in um, influencing how artistic uh, opportunities can create sense of bold uh, position to take with our mission statement. And so I would very much encourage adding in a theme of placemaking. Did we just lose Chris, Kristen there a few times or is it just me? Yes, yeah, we did. Okay. Oh, I was going to ask that because I'm on Safari and I probably should have gone on Google Prime and I was wondering if it was my problem. <laughs> so we lost you. It, you were in and out the whole okay. entire time. Sorry about that, Kristen. Can you repeat? Oh. <laughs> yeah, you, you cut out a little bit. I the, the things that I heard was that you liked the community-based strategies being included in there, but that the focus or incorporation of placemaking um, you would encourage that, but please fill in what we missed because those were the two main things I heard. Sure, sure. Uh, so I was just echoing Jonathan's statement about the public art uh, being part of planning and economic development uh, and how including in the statement of community-based strategies opens up for flexibility and opportunity for placemaking. And I think that would be a strong component to our mission statement. Great, thank you. Looks like Melanie. Yeah, I just, just a word of caution that we don't want to make our mission statement seem as though um, we're looking for particular places which can be gathering points or beacons and others that cannot because there is already a uh, impression that there are art deserts in Santa Rosa and um, so we just need to be careful uh, about what we're including in the mission statement so that it's not construed as further 
alienating some communities and building up others. Thank you for flagging that. I really appreciate it. It's actually a great segue to talk about some of the goals um, about where we're going. So I'm going to skip the theory of change. Um, sorry if, while you get dizzy as I scroll through here and come down to um, uh, these draft goals. Um, so this is what the planning, the steering, sorry, strategic planning committee um, current ideas are of where we can focus over the next couple of years. Um, and so I wanted to share these again, just to get some input um, about what's resonating with you and what's not. So we talked about the vision being the big high level, what we're striving towards, these goals getting to articulate what progress can we start to make towards that vision and where do we want to focus our efforts. So the committee's got four goals currently in draft form. Uh, goal one, prioritize diverse voices within the programming process, outreach, and infrastructure of the public art program. Um, so that's one of the aspects that Melanie was just flagging there to, to some extent. Goal two, uh, infuse art into all city areas and recruit community leaders to champion arts programming. Again, attacking some of the, the art desert. Goal three, increase awareness and familiarity with the public art program and the Arts and Public Places Committee. And goal four, identify and secure bigger funding streams with more flexibility and less restrictions uh, or fewer restrictions. Um, so we'd love just again, similar to what we've done, um, if feedback about if this is where the public art program focuses its energy for the next couple of years, what do you like about this? What do you not like? What do you think might be missing? Oh, Jeff, I see your hand up. Thanks. Um, right off the bat, I think what's missing is actually having a goal that has to do with the um, with projects, with actual public art projects um, to um, to approve and and um, and move forward on the implementation of projects that, you know, that, that would uh, support the mission. Because uh, it's interesting, I kind of like all, all of these goals, but then it's like, yeah, but none of them actually address what I think we're here to do, which is to actually um, put some projects out there, get some proposals back and, and actually put some art out into public spaces. Just to be clear, so I, um, that, that's helpful to hear. Does goal, so I think the intention behind goal one and goal two are to do exactly that. Um, but it's clearly not coming through as you're reading it and your reactions to it. You're, you're seeing the absence of that. Right, I mean, I, like um, if goal two were worded instead of infuse art into all city areas, or maybe it was, it would be infuse art into all city areas um, by, um, you know, through public art placement and recruit community leaders to champion or something like that. But it's, it, I'd like to see some specific language about the, the, the actual process of public art placement. Okay, thank you. Other reactions about what you like or don't like or what you think might be missing? Yeah, uh, the thought. Am I audible? Oh, yeah, yeah. hey, Nathan, go ahead. Uh, hey, um, one of the things that I think is most exciting about this committee is that it's um, sort of on the verge of being integrated within or into um, the planning committee. Is that, that's correct, yeah. And and that um, and and uh, sort of stepping out out of a kind of neoliberal framework of art as a as a kind of way of decorating the urban fabric, and into a, um, a scenario where it is kind of more into integrated into um, you know how cities are conceived of and how urban planning is organized and, um, you know, kind of really sh 
forming a, a as, as a kind of means to connect people with this, the decisions that are being made about the spaces that they live in. And I, you know, I don't know how to put that in a more succinct way, um, but that's kind of what I'm excited about being here. And um, I think there might be a way to uh, sort of highlight that within, the, within this set of goals. Just to make sure I understand that comment fully, it sounds like what excites you is that um, there's a real focus on a, a healthy, engaging process by which public art comes to be and how it takes root as opposed to, um, you know, sort of cherry picking installations and it's just the, it's the actual product itself and getting to actually focus on having a healthier, more inclusive process itself is, is exciting for you. Which is what culture is, you know, essentially, right? I won't, yeah, I won't fight you on that one. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, so it's like, like, like how are, um, how, you know, how is everyone who's living here sort of included in the process of um, conceiving of and implementing public art projects? Great, thank you. I'm cognizant of time. We've got a, a couple other conversations we want to have. Any other final comments about what you, what you like or don't like about these goal, draft goals? Um, I'll just jump in really quick and I it just I noticed three key goals over the next three years, but I see four goals. The, yes, the, 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 <laughs> that's, that's an easy that's an easy one to fix. We'll, we'll just, credit you just, with that one. You get a footnote and everything. Just met, just saw that. <laughs> um, Monica, did you have your hand up? Well, I did. I I couldn't. I don't see the the last speaker, the one who was. Uh, talking. I didn't That's see Nathan, Nathan Azadarian. Oh, um, it doesn't look like he has his camera on, but he's on oh, the call. Okay. Oh, there he is. Okay. Hi, Hi Nathan. Hi. <laughs> okay. I, you know what? I did have another comment, and I'm not interrupting anyone, am I? <clears throat> um, okay, because I can't see everybody when I'm reading my notes and stuff. So when we have, I know we can only, we're working towards three of these goals, and we have four on here. My question is, which goals rely on other goals? Like for instance, number four will probably help facilitate definitely a few of those goals, if not all. So when we're looking at having three, which ones do we have to have? Or which ones are needed to make the other ones possible? Sorry, just to clarify, that's a, it's a typo at the top. We don't need to think of, um, we have to winnow this down to three. Um, we can, uh, that's a typo at the top that we need three goals. I would, as a strategist, I think three to five goals is about right. And I really like when organizations, just looking at all of the different types of organizations we work with, I always think it's really, really smart to have one of your strategic plan goals be entirely internally focused about how we operate better and it's clear from the conversations that a lot of it is around where our funding is coming from and what's flexible versus not. And I think that was the area where the committee saw an opportunity to unlock more potential. I agree with you. That's going to fuel all of the other goals for absolutely. Yeah, sorry about that typo on here. No worries. Okay. Um, oh, Nina I, had her hand oh. up. Yeah, I just have one thought on goal one prioritize diverse voices and I would like to add and robust participation within the rest of that. Great, thank you. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop screen share for a second. So really, really, really helpful. Great strategic planning is iterative in nature. Um, and so thank you all for engaging in some kind of uh, some softer clay and wet material here to like actually engage and help shape it about where you think it needs to go next. And we'll keep working with the strategic planning committee to continually refine this language um, and get it closer and closer and closer to where we really want to be. This input is phenomenally helpful in that effort. So thank you all very much. We're going to shift um, in the time we've got remaining to talk about this committee and how this committee plays a role in helping advance this larger agenda. So I'm gonna turn it over to Alex to, uh, to walk us through the next portion together. Great, thank you, Jonathan. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, 
Perfect. So as Jonathan mentioned, um, what we'd like you to do now is um, hold up a mirror in some regard and think about the purpose and role of this committee in relation to vision, mission, and strategy that we just walked you through. And this can be challenging in some ways because particularly as you know, a, a, a component of a city system, it's hard to step out of that world and leverage this unique moment to reimagine what your role might be. Um, and so I want to push you a little bit to try to think as creatively as possible. There's no wrong answers here, but it's it certainly is welcome. We would welcome you to test some assumptions around uh, your current role, and then how might that be redefined in order to advance the the goals and mission that were at least the draft that was just um, articulated. And there's a lot of different ways you might be thinking about this. And even just scanning the goals we looked at moments ago, um, there is a decision-making function currently. There could be a fund development, uh, fundraising component, cultivating champions. Um, and then there's also aspects that uh, maybe outside of the purview of the committee, but make, might make perfect sense for staff to be the lead in driving. So there's a lot of different ways you might consider this. And to kick us off, what I want to do is um, give you a, a minute of self-reflection. Hopefully you have either a pad and pencil in front of you or your laptop, and uh, maybe just jot down or sketch your initial ideas that come to mind individually as it relates to the purpose and role of the APPC. And then I'll let you know when a minute is up and then um, I would invite uh, you then to share and discuss um, it, discuss that reflection so that we can start to workshop how we um, as a group might envision that role remaining the same and possibly changing going forward. Any questions about that before I turn you loose to do some sketching? All right, so go ahead and take a minute and I'll let you know when the time is up. All right. So would anybody like to share your initial thoughts and kick off our conversation? Nina? So I'd like to give a little bit of historical perspective I think I've been on this committee for eight years. Um, and it was a larger committee until, Tara, you tell me how many years ago, uh, what, since we did the public art uh, program. Um, the master plan and yeah. the policy changes that came out of yeah. that took place in 2016, 17, 16, 17. Okay. When I first came on the Art and Public Places Committee, it was a much larger group. There were two city council members and a lot of people were representing other uh, city boards and commissions, such as design review, cultural heritage board, board of community services, and then there were some at-large members. And now we've transitioned um, to a fewer members and not having strict representation from our cross-representation from these other committee boards and commissions, 
and we're getting even more uh, away from that as we transition into all district appointments that are political appointments. Um, so I feel the loss of not having members from designer, specifically design review and the cultural cultural heritage board. Um, so the statements that we make or promote regarding our composition, I think should take into um, account where we've been and answer the question where we're going. Because if it's all district appointments, we could see more political appointments without people ha representing specific bodies or populations within our community. Yeah, thank you for that. That context certainly helps. And even about 10 minutes ago, uh, the comment that was made by one of your colleagues related to this, this committee shifting into, was it the planning commission? Is there a consolidation that's happening? Did I no, understand that right? I think they were talking about the fact that um, Art and Public Places Committee used to be housed in Park and Rec. And then when it changed to be part yeah. of economic development, we I it's a great um, move. And within the arts community, we talked a lot about, um, I've been a member of Art Trails for 35 years, and we talked about maybe 10 years ago about trying to um, bring, making Sonoma County, because it was a, it's a county organization, as a cultural destination. Um, and 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 the potential for uh, attracting you know art tourists. Um, so there's been a lot of change over the last ten years. And I think that whenever we define where we're going, we should look at where we've been. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Monica and then Kristen. Um, I I appreciate what Nina was saying. The only thing that I wrote down was, and I think it reflects sort of missing a, a larger body of participation um, in the art and public places. And um, I was writing down invite invite more uh, guests or. or <clears throat> I know we do that and people have been invited and people request to speak before us, but um, somehow in an honorarium kind of way, not, not paying, but um, honoring people by bringing their voices to our meetings by just inviting them. But that's just a thought. So you see that just to, to make sure I'm hearing you correct, correctly, you see the, the role of the committee to be increasing engagement with the public by inviting them to participate in the conversation more proactively? Yes, yes. I mean, I, it could be burdensome and you know, complicated to include um, more voices, but taking um, uh, an initiative to invite periodically people to, uh, attend uh, would be, seems like it might uh, add some more vitality to the process. Kristen, I think you had your hand up. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, some notes that I wrote down, uh, I think reflect a little bit of background about my position on the committee and why I was attracted to uh, be part of these conversations. And um, I wrote down, encourage creative placemaking by not by navigating the city process. And something that I am really drawn to in, in my line of work, uh, working more on the art in private developments. I have been on design development teams and working in a planning component to understand the nuts and bolts of who's involved and what board needs to, or, or uh, official needs to approve each piece before something really comes to fruition. And so I really see education as part of our tenant and really understanding or engaging in a dialogue where there is 
uh, differentiation between art and private developments and public development. And that can often get misconstrued uh, what is public space and what is private. And not with not wanting to get too into that minutia, uh, I want or that divide. Uh, I, I think it's a big uh, consideration for our committee to think about how we interact with other boards and commissions as well and how we work within the framework and educating that is, is something that I'm very passionate about. And I also, going off of that, another big role of art in public places is to celebrate opportunities uh, along with our education. And that is, those were kind of my two cents from our self-reflection. Just can I ask a quick clarification? You mentioned the word, both the words education and, na and navigation. It, are you seeing who is on, who is the end user of that role for the committee? Are you navigating the private sector through the city processes? Is it is it directed towards specific members of the community? Just so so that we understand what is that role sure. relative to the the persons being served? That's a great directing question. <laughs> I get a little confused between or blurred between the, the parties that I work with. Um, and I think that the end user is our community member who might not um, have the background or the knowledge of you know, the city council reviews this type of project or the planning commission reviews this type of project, but to have the confidence that the art and public places committee uh, has this purview and has an understanding of what type of art and culture and celebration is meaningful is, um, and, and not to define that into too narrow of a category, but I think that that is a big uh, that is a big rallying part of this board is to tie that process together. Um, it looks like I saw Jeff's hand up and then Lisa. Yeah, um, this is really interesting conversation. Uh, the, um, so the, the reflection on our role, uh, maybe because I was still thinking in a vision and mission sort of context, I, what I wrote was, I guess, more aspirational in, in, in that vein. But um, what I'd say, what I'm thinking about is our role is to create a vision for public art and to conceive and implement projects that inspire and engage our community and create a sense of place. And um, Kristen, I think what you're talking about in terms of education and, and sort of my concept of engagement sort of is inclusive of that. So um, yeah, I think, and, and there were some comments earlier, um, I think uh, Monica and, and Nina both um, are, are talking about um, bringing more, I guess, more voices to the table. And so um, I kind of like that idea that we would um, play a, a role of being um, maybe the creating a platform through which, and, and I think we did this, for example, um, the, uh, the courthouse square project that's currently underway. And I'm, I mean, I have the honor of being on that committee. We, we had a survey that got hundreds of responses. And so um, I think this is a really important part of the process is that we, we have this role to bring people's voices um, and to, to understand what people are thinking about and what their responses are to um, art in public places. So anyway, that's, that's what I'm thinking about. Oh, and one other thought, I think Nina um, mentioned about um, a cultural, um, sort of a cultural destination that Sonoma County would be 
sort of, um, you know, elevated, I, I guess, in a way. And, and, and I, I certainly got a sense of that when I've only been um, here for three years, um, working as director of the museum for three years, but it's definitely part of the museum's vision. And when I talk to my colleagues who are directors of all of the other cultural organizations, I know individual artists and the cultural organizations are all thinking about how can we work together? How can we create, we create an environment and um, an image outside of Sonoma County as well as within the county? And uh, in our case, let's think about Santa Rosa in, in particular, that there's, there's really a um, culture here that, that art, the arts, creativity, public art, culture really help define who we are. Thank you. Lisa? Yeah, I was actually some of what Jeff was saying and what Kristen was saying and to educate was it's definitely a goal. But um, what I had written down was um, to work towards help faci facilitating and or guiding community, community leaders with empowering their community through public art. And um, because we are putting a lot of emphasis on placemaking. And when I was looking through and kind of doing some research, I came across a great resource from the um, NEA, the National Endowments of Arts. And it was a 220 page, um, how, do, how to do creative placemaking. And um, it was just, it has so much information and I haven't been able to read all 220 pages yet. And I know that Tara has read most of it when I um, discussed it with her just real briefly. Um, and it just talks about reimagining vacant spaces through temporary art projects. And it gives you a better understanding on why and how much of the, of the work needs to be community driven to actually really just make a huge difference within that, that within our population, within our community, within the neighborhood. Um, so I still need to do a lot more reading through it, but there is, there's just a lot of information that I really think that would be helpful for all of us. So that's my stance. Lisa, I'm, I'm familiar with that uh, NEA uh, creative placemaking document as well. And um, yeah, it's pretty powerful. Monica, I think you had your hand up. Yes, I, I that um, article sounds really wonderful to to dig into. But I was just thinking, you know, like uh, I Santa Rosa. There have been critiques of Santa Rosa not having an identity, not being a distinctive place. And and I feel like if we just keep making more and more art and get more and more projects going, that uh, identity will uh, grow and emerge and uh, you know it's it's kind of like an artist in their studio worrying about their style or whatever just make more work just do more to get uh and it'll it'll work out anyway um <clears throat> so i was just thinking of that i wanted to share that thought any other reflections on the role or purpose of this group i i'm Ask Jeannie if she could perhaps pull the goals list back up as a reference point. Because um, what we what we want you to do is continue to think in terms of your scope relative to this desired future and discrete goals that we're workshopping today. And um, it might be constructive too to think about it, is there a is there a particular goal that is just low hanging fruit? It's the most obvious in relation to the role of the committee. We do that thing, that is on us. Um, and conversely is there might be a goal that is outside of scope and may, not that it's not important but it might be a responsibility of someone outside of the committee uh, or beyond the scope of um, at least the, the immediate group um, uh, of the APPC. So curious where you, what your reaction is to your role vis-a-vis -vis the goals here. 
like Nathan, you have your hand up. You're muted though, unmute yourself, Nathan. Yeah, I, I'm, I mostly think about my role in terms of um, a kind of personal project that I'm already engaged in um, that has to do with building linkages between uh, regional history and cultural practices, local artists and international practitioners. Um, I feel like the mission of the APBC probably um, has a lot to do with um, creating opportunities for new practitioners and audiences within the communities who are, you know, are often historically marginalized or um, are not um, provided with opportunities to engage with the resources that, are, that may, may be available. Um, and I think the committee should be asking fundamental questions about uh, what art actually is and um, what it can be and do in relation to uh, community and how it might model um, broader and broader questions about civic engagement. I second I that less pretty art. I mm -hmm. echo also what Nathan just had to say. What about it? specifically resonated with you two? Well, I don't know. I, I feel like, am I, yes, I'm open. I was waiting, but I feel like, you know, we're so safe and we really don't do a good job of, this is not what's the good things, but that we need to do a better job of bringing in more diverse art to Santa Rosa, whether it's in, and it's a, incumbent upon the committee members to go out and find those people and not just rely on the same people submitting proposals over and over again. Um, and, but, you know, try and widen the net that we cast to see if we can bring in some of those communities that are underrepresented in Santa Rosa. Lisa? Yeah, absolutely what um, Melanie just said too. We need to, we just can't say, hi, we're here we want to support you. We actually have to go out there because there's so many communities don't even know, don't even know that we exist. They don't know what we have. We, they don't know what we can offer and we need to find out what we can offer and how we can support these communities and how we can bring out all the things. I mean, cause there is, there's probably so much creativity there but they have never given, been able to just give them that door, that open door to explore and to be able to create. And um, I just think we need to, as this committee, just need to go out there and guide and help and offer. That's the least we can do. Perfect, thank you. Any, any final comments before we transition to our closing? Uh, Nina? So this relates to goal number three. <laughs> and I don't know if it sounds crazy to put this in here, but bear with me. It says increase awareness and familiarity. And I would like to say, and excitement, or I think my biggest disappointment with being involved with Art in Public Places for eight years is that we've had in eight years, probably a handful of meetings where people really, really come and give input and it's only been when there have been projects that have been somewhat controversial and I can name those the Dragon Mural, Coffee Park, Railroad Square and with the public art master plan uh, when it went to the um, city council there was really not so much uh, participation of the community at large but I just wish more people would get involved on a regular basis when it's not 
because they don't like what what we might do uh, on approving a certain project. Just get more people involved and get some excitement going here. Some real robust interaction. That's a that's a great way of punctuating the conversation on what what's possible. So thank you, Jeannie. Uh, turning it back over to you. Thanks, Alex. Um, thank you all for all of your um, incredible input and insight. Um, I'm over here taking furious notes. Um, but um, I wanted to close with a quick reflection um, and please share if, you're, if, you, if you'd like to. Um, two years from now, okay, we're gonna take out the crystal ball here and think about the public art program and the Art and Public Places Committee. Two years from now, what do you hope is true about public art in Santa Rosa? I'll give you a second to think about that. Um, and then share, uh, if a few of you would like to share um, what that vision looks like for you. Not everybody wants here. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So um, I can't help but uh, reflect on on some of the the comments um, that happened in the last session right before we got to this. But I would like to think in a couple of years that we are um, in the process of planning or uh, planning for or implementing projects that will have a unique presence and that will help define a sense of place for Santa Rosa. Um, and actually uh, thinking about Nathan's comments and a couple of others um, that we're, let's say, not playing it safe and that there is a level of community engagement that perhaps is more about education and bringing people through the process so that if there is a project that is a bit more challenging, and I hope we do have challenging projects, that people will get behind those projects. And, and I don't think we should shy away from controversy. I think it's more about the process through which people can be engaged and understand why something might be of value, even if it's not safe and pretty. Thanks, Jeff. Anyone else want to share? I would like to just dovetail off of Jeff, Jeff's comment about going back to what is the value and really thinking about going back to these tenants and uh, in the vision statement, what what type of themes could we draw out from that of you know things that are of value and um, hopefully keeping that in mind as we go forward with projects that may or may not be controversial or shaping of our community. But I um, I think back to value and um, I think that's a. a a promising word and something to keep in mind as we're going through a strategic planning process. Absolutely. Those are great words to end on. Um, Tara, did you want to quickly just close us out, um, maybe talk a little bit about the next steps with this committee in terms of um, the adoption process? Yeah, thank you, Jeannie. Thank you all for your great insights and um, thoughts on all of this. Um, our goal is to have a plan, a final strategic plan um, sometime by the new year, around the new year um, in January. Uh, we've been delayed many times with a variety of things, including disasters and whatnot. So we may, um, you, you never know what's gonna happen next, but that was um, our, uh, our hope was to have something in January. 
at that time we would be bringing, or shortly thereafter, we would be bringing um, a, a draft to the committee, or I should say the final draft to the committee for adoption would be the ultimate um, final involvement of this, um, of this group. Um, this is a strategic plan. It's not a policy document. So the city council does not need to adopt or approve it. But um, I would like to also recommend that we take a presentation to the city council to let them know um, what this is and um, what our goals and vision and mission are. Um, I think that would be helpful for the awareness level. So um, those would be the next things coming up for this actual document, this final strategic plan. Um, and uh, we will uh, provide you with updates um, going forward if the timeline changes or there are additional steps in between that come up. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Good to see everybody.